Hong Kong. One of the most densely populated cities on Earth, known worldwide as a financial center and for its shopping, its pollution and fast pace of life. But there is another side of Hong Kong. This special place is also well known, but for very different reasons. It's a magical place of beauty and tranquility. A haven from the stresses and strains of the city. A place where people come to connect with nature, discover a more sustainable way of living, and learn how to live in harmony with the natural world. Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden. And this is its story. Kadori Farm and Botanic Garden, or KFBG as it's known, is less than an hour's drive from Hong Kong's spectacular waterfront. Yet it's a world apart. KFBG's forerunner, the Kadori Agricultural Aid Association, or KAAA, started work at this site in 1956 turning a barren hillside into a jewel that's set in Hong Kong's new territories. A green oasis that's become a focus for sustainable living, holistic education and nature conservation. Today, Kaduri Farm's mission is to harmonize our relationship with the environment and its vision is a world in which we live sustainably, with respect for each other and nature. Present-day chairman is Andrew McCauley, great-nephew of KFBG's co-founder, Sir Horace Koduri. I remember visiting as a child with my sister, and we'd come on the weekends with Horace, and he would drive us around, take us to the pigsties, the chicken sheds, and then up to the two summits. And on one occasion, we were driving down, and we must have been misbehaving really badly in the back of the car because Horace had had enough, and he ordered us out. We then had to walk down, and this was a bit intimidating at first because we didn't really know the route. But as we began to explore our way, we became really enchanted with our surroundings. And I remember that I ended up laughing at the fact that this punishment had backfired. We were having such a great time. So this experience left a really deep impression, and maybe that was the intention. But now, looking back, it's really such a privilege and such a joy to have the opportunity to continue this work that started so long ago. To my mind, the most essential value of the farm is love. And it's a wonderful piece of synchronicity that our site includes a mountain, Kunyam Shan, named after the Chinese deity of love and compassion. People used to come and pray for bountiful harvests. So is it just a coincidence that this site was deemed to be the most suitable for an extensive agricultural aid program? Certainly the KAAA were not thinking about Kun Yam. In fact, they put a phone booth where the current statue is. So now we're extending that expression of love to include all of nature, animals and plants, as well as people. Andrew has guided KFBG into a new millennium, staying true to its founding principles. In the mid-1950s, these steep hillsides in the Lam Chun Valley were not as lush as they are now. But there was water. Unlike most Hong Kong streams, this one flowed all year. And this caught the eye of Andrew's forebears, the visionary brothers Lawrence and Horace Kaduri. Then the slopes were an ecological desert. Many trees had been lost through centuries of tea planting, and the rest were felled during World War II. The Kaduri brothers saw the site's potential. It was the perfect place 
for an experimental farm to trial different crops at different altitudes and a base from which to help immigrants arriving from mainland China. It was tough, but soon the farm was up and running. They offered farmers training, start-up loans, and gifts of livestock, some specially bred at Kaduri Farm. They developed the site, started to plant, and a wave of self-sufficiency swept through Hong Kong. Today, Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden is almost unrecognizable from when Horace first laid out the plans for his grand vision. His legacy is a place where visitors develop and enhance their relationship with the natural world. We have a wonderful infrastructure from which we can help people to connect directly with nature. You know, fear of nature, or biophobia as it's known, is a big problem in urban areas. But nature is our mother. And what happens to any animal that grows up disconnected from its mother? It loses its capacity to survive. And I think that's what's been happening with humanity. So at the core of our mission, which is to harmonize our relationship with the environment, is the need to connect directly with nature. And that's why we've started to develop programs for mindfulness in nature. Nature is full of marvels. It doesn't judge. It's a great healer. So when our minds become still and absorbed in natural surroundings, we can start to feel one with nature. And we can experience what modern science has been telling us, that mind and matter are interconnected and that all matter is in fact energy. Then we become whole, we become complete, and we can shine with the simple joy of being alive. Harmony with nature underpins all KFBG's activities. And the education department runs programs to open the hearts and minds of people of all ages. So they learn about the need to protect the natural world, to deepen their relationship with nature and to touch the soil. The Fauna Conservation Department has a teaching role too, helping people to meet animals and overcome fears, and for some, to experience the thrill of releasing a bird that's been nursed back to health. They introduce people to Hong Kong's wildlife, and animals that cannot be returned to the wild play a key role. The Wild Animal Rescue Centre treats animals found injured and also looks after those confiscated by the authorities from the illegal wildlife trade. Whenever possible, they are released into the wild. And there are important conservation breeding programmes for endangered species, like the Golden Coin Turtle. The Flora Conservation Team cares for the botanic gardens and the forest. It plays a vital role in the conservation of rare plants, especially Hong Kong's precious orchids. The team are also restoring the native forest that was cleared long ago. The Sustainable Living and Agriculture Department encourages the community to lower its ecological footprint and cope with the economic instability caused by our impact on nature.
Working closely with the authorities in mainland China, the Kaduri Conservation China Department aims to protect threatened species and their habitats in several provinces. In this series of films, we go behind the scenes to see at first hand the work of KFBG. First up is sustainable living. The health of the gardens and indeed the planet can be judged by the abundance of butterflies and bees. No other insects have served nature, including people, quite like bees. Many wild plants and crops depend on them for pollination. These are native bees recruited from the wild. Mr. Lee, the beekeeper, is as busy collecting the surplus honey as the bees are making it. The honey is harvested once or twice a year, and speed is crucial to minimize disturbance to the colonies. Mr. Lee and his team are devoted to their bees. The eco-friendly farming methods used at KFBG ensure the insects' well-being. Honeybees elsewhere are not so fortunate. Pesticides kill them. Kaduri Farm's pure and precious amber liquid is filtered and then bottled to be sold in the farm shop. Beekeeping workshops help people understand why bees are so important. And course members come from all walks of life. One participant is Dr. Billy Howe. I'm an ecologist. I'm always interested in the relationship between bees and the, and the environment. Kiduri Farm is probably the only uh, place in Hong Kong that you can draw the relationship between bees and the environment and also give out a conservation message. By running this course, they're not just telling people how to farm bees, but they are able to link uh, nature, bee farming and people. The whole course centered around uh, human nature relationship. The participants may soon be harvesting their own honey. A move towards self-sufficiency. With climate change and oil depletion, big cities cannot always rely on imported produce. So local, small-scale food production is vital. Hong Kong people want to be close to the land, and tomorrow they'll be able to buy fresh local fruit and vegetables at the Star Ferry Market, organized by Kaduri Farm. taste of the simple life for city dwellers. Before most of Hong Kong is awake, the harvest is well underway. KFBG's agriculture officers visit all the farmers to observe their organic farming practices. Only then are they eligible to join the farmer's market. Yu Yong Sung is a former businessman turned organic farmer. At Kaduri Farm, Yu Gum Lum gathers fresh fruit for market, treating each orange with the utmost care. Uh, Jiu 
照顧嗰個仔咁咯，先能能夠咧誒、呃、做到啊，要愛心咯，照顧佢嘅。婆婆 is harvesting beetroots. She is a veteran farmer of the new territories. 喺呢度做做咗四廿一年嘅農田。嗰啲四十一年常規咧就做咗三十幾年噶啦，啊有機咧就種咗八九年。The chickens at Kuduri Farm are part of the same early morning hustle and bustle, and their free-range eggs are best sellers at the farmers' market. Chickens also played an important role in Kaduri Farm's early history. Back in the 1950s, Hong Kong's population swelled with immigrants from mainland China, many in desperate need of help. What was then the Kaduri Agricultural Aid Association lent a hand. Helping immigrant families, particularly widows, regain their dignity and rebuild their lives. Aside from financial loans, they were given livestock, including chickens, to start their own businesses. KAAA's motto was "Helping people help themselves." Today. Wong Gum Choi looks after Kaduri Farm's chickens. She's worked with her flock for nearly ten years and takes pride in giving them the best possible care. She loves her job so much she even misses them on her days off. These are the long chain chong of chai hap la. So we will give some chicken to the chicks because the chicks need to eat green things. These chicks. 誒、呃、好似咧誒、呃、知道我哋想點咁㗎，我哋誒、呃、我見到佢哋咧，我特別開心咯。Deep litter on the floor gives these chickens something more natural to walk on, and it will eventually be composted. Wang Gum Choi believes happy, contented chickens lay top quality eggs. 所以嗰我哋加到你設計咧就。想去黑啲，等啲雞咧喺度生蛋，覺得舒服啲，開心啲。我覺得你農場啲蛋咧就比較新鮮咯，同埋咧我就覺得好香。同埋我哋啲雞都好開心嘅，所以啲蛋應該好食啲嘅。Outside, the farmers pick the last of the organic fruit and vegetables before their short journey to market. It's a weekly trip Paw Paw looks forward to. 香港啲朋友咧，亦都佢佢咧都好痛錫，都好錫我哋啲農夫噶。我同佢做朋友咧，真係做得好開心咯。所以好多謝加道理農場幾十年嚟，好維護我哋啲農夫。At Yu Yong Sung's farm, he and his neighbour Po Po load up. They must get to Hong Kong Island well before the market opens. It's a one-hour drive. The carbon mileage of local produce is hundreds or even thousands of times lower than that of produce sourced from overseas. The market is at the famous Star Ferry Pier, where a team of volunteers from Kaduri Farm sets up the stalls. The market is a bridge between local organic farmers and their customers. This kind of small-scale fair trade local economy is at the heart of the sustainability movement. Such is the demand; the queue forms well before the market opens. People increasingly want to know where their fruit and vegetables come from, and they like to meet the farmers face to face. 
It's an opportunity for Yu Young Sun and Paw Paw to meet fellow farmers and their loyal customers. By skipping the middleman, every cent they make goes to their farms and families. At 10 o'clock sharp, the market opens. KFBG market coordinator is Amy Hung. Kamala Business is brisk, especially at the egg store, where there is still a long queue. A special visitor to the market today is the eminent educator and writer Dr. Satish Kumar from the Schumacher College in the UK. And can you eat this as well? He's been invited to Hong Kong by Kuduri Farm as a visiting teacher. Mm, 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 mm. When I tell people back at home in the UK that I'm going to Hong Kong, why on earth are you going to Hong Kong? And I say, there's a farmer's market there. There's a Kaduri farm there. 350 acres of organic growing food and vegetables and fruit. This farmer's market is providing real food, which is fresh, which is tasty, not wasteful, not packaged in plastics. So I think more and more people need to embrace this kind of life and this kind of farmer's market and buy their food here. Hong Kong is becoming too industrialized, too urbanized, and our land is disappearing. So these farmers are the beacon of hope for the future sustainability. I am delighted to say that farmers' markets are emerging all over the world because people are becoming aware that globalized economy where you have to transport your food around the world requires a lot of fossil fuel. That means a lot of carbon emission, CO2 emission in the atmosphere, greenhouse gases causing global warming, climate change all over the world. So not only in China, not only in Hong Kong, but all around the world, farmers markets are emerging and they are the answers for our problem of global warming and climate change. This is a small farmer's market in a big city and is part of a global movement that's changing people's attitudes. The market gives people a chance to make a different choice. And the choices they make will have an impact on climate change, pollution, their health, their community, and even the future of life on Earth. Many of us have an urban lifestyle that is far removed from the natural world, and so the link between nature and us has sometimes been forgotten. Not just here, but in towns and cities across the globe. We want to be less isolated from each other and the land. This distance from the natural cycle of life is something that Kaduri Farm is addressing, with the help of thinkers like Satish Kumar. And participants joining this transformational course, Small is Beautiful, are learning to think and act in more positive ways. Handling soil and compost is a new experience for many of these city dwellers. 
And in this rain, it's something they'll not forget in a hurry. They add a mixture of compost and biochar, a special charcoal made on site to both nourish the soil and lock in carbon. The soil produces the food that feeds us, and healthy food nourishes not just the body, but also family and social relationships and spiritual well-being. Most of Hong Kong's waste is dumped in landfill sites, which are nearly full. With government funding, Kaduri Farm is working with a local housing estate on a pilot scheme to turn food waste into compost. Each day, over 3,000 tonnes of food waste is generated in Hong Kong. Most ends up in landfill, where it rots and releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas. One day, all of the city's organic material will be recycled. Here, residents of this estate receive a bag of compost made from their own food waste to put on their own gardens. At the smallest beautiful course, ingredients for tonight's feast are being harvested. <laughs> For many, this is the first time they have experienced the thrill of picking vegetables from the rich, dark earth. And even the rain can't dampen their spirits. <laughs> Satish firmly believes that bringing people together in experiences with nature like this is as important as any facts or ideas shared. And it's a wonderful that Kaduri Farm is not only about farming and botanical garden and, and conservation, but also about education. You can take them back. Kaduri Farm wants to make this information available and this experience available to Hong Kong people and people from around the world if they want to come. Getting close to nature is a rewarding experience. And for Lam Lai Shan, it has been a real eye-opener. Mm Everyone can take pleasure in the food they have grown and gathered themselves, prepared together and cooked together. Fresh, locally sourced food, free from chemicals, and with zero food miles. This kind of course can lead to fundamental changes in the way we treat our neighbors and our planet. Through the work of Kaduri Farm and Botanic Garden, ordinary people like you and me are finding ways in which to live more in harmony with nature.